Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Father Jason Tiroff, and I welcome you to our second podcast of the St. Jude Parish Chatter. I'm here once again with Tyler. Hi, Father. Uh, it's great to be here again, and it's it's great. We've, we've gotten great, a lot of great feedback from our first one. A handful of you started listening to us, and uh, we look forward to spreading this, and more people in our parish uh, can continue to listen to our chatter each week. Uh, this week, our sponsor is uh, Religious Education and Youth Ministry Registration. Hooray to Religious Education <laughs> and Registration for Religious Education. So put that in your heads, everybody. <laughs> we got to register for Religious Ed. Yeah, starting, um, I guess it's not, not this weekend, but the following weekend, we're going to be doing registration for, for both RE and Youth Ministry. So depending masses. on when you're listening to this, to make that make sense, it's the last weekend of July is when we're doing uh, Religious Education Registration. Here. Correct, yeah. Uh, so it'll be great get get all your kids from from pre-K all the way through high school signed up, um, and we look forward to spending the year with them on Wednesday and Sundays. Um, but great, so that's our sponsor for the week. Hooray to our sponsor! So if you have <laughs> kids or grandkids, so get them registered for religious education. As Tyler mentioned, it's all the way from kindergarten through high school. We're taking registrations last Sunday of July. Uh, and if you have any other questions, you can reach out to Brenda or myself here at the parish office. Um, before we get into this week's reflection, Father, I wanted to bring up another one of my poll questions that I put out in our, our weekly flock notes. And, and last week we talked about one of the very first ones I ever put out, which was our favorite ice cream. And, and, but I wanted to go to a more recent one, the one that was in the most pre, the recent uh, flock note from a week ago on, on the, was it the 14th? I think we um, should hire a data analyst to go over this because I, I'm sure that vanilla should have come in first. I was shocked. Was no, it butter pecan? Is that what came in first? Butter pecan was our, was our top so ice cream. so obscure. It just doesn't seem uh, like it should have come in first. I do like it. I have had it, and it is pretty good. But mm-hmm. I, I still don't have it as my – I wouldn't have it as my favorite. I, I grant you that. It's good, but I just think our data <laughs> is skewed in some way here. So this week – or I guess, you know, the last week's question I put in the flock note is what are people's favorite pizza toppings? And, and I think that – I am particularly good at this. I, I had a, I had a feeling I knew where people would go, mostly because I work in youth ministry, and and there's a lot of pizza involved. So, um, the the possible toppings I gave people to vote were cheese, pepperoni, sausage, mushroom, pineapple, anchovies, chicken, and bell peppers. So I've I've worked in parishes enough too to think I, I'm going to be right on this one. If I'm wrong on this one, I definitely think that the data is skewed somehow. <laughs> so I am going to say at least my favorite topic is pepperoni, and I think that's what everybody else is going to go with too. How did I do? Uh, you did really good. Uh, uh, mine would be pepperoni as well. Uh, pepperoni and cheese actually tied. Oh, so like oh. They, they both tied with eleven, which is what I would have guessed. Well, at least within youth ministry, I always when I order pizzas, I always get about an equal number of pepperoni and cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes maybe even a little bit more cheese because sometimes the kids, that's that's just what they want. Mm. Uh, but a very, very close second was mm. sausage with, with only one vote behind those two. Really? Which oh. is also another topping that I'll, I'll order on, on occasion when I yeah. get pizzas for youth ministry events. Um, anchovies and chicken didn't get any votes. Aw. Um, I don't mind anchovies. I had it, I've had it on the pizza before. I think it's pretty good. Uh, but the one that I... I Personally, we won't get too much into this because we could probably talk for hours on it, is is pineapple. Mm. Uh, I'm not a fan it's, of pineapple on yeah. pizza. It's like forced to be on there. What mm-hmm. do the Italians know about pineapple? They would have <laughs> never put pineapple on their pizza. So we have uh, offended, I think, all of the, our people from Italian descent. And I think we need to uh, do some penance by taking pineapple off the pizza. That is my, <laughs> my pastoral recommendation. <laughs> well, wonderful. Uh, it's great to be able to have fun, talk about these things. But... Really, we want to be able to, to dive into our faith a little bit more and, and just enter into this upcoming weekend's readings. So, Father, would you, uh, would you read for us the gospel from this upcoming weekend? Yeah, sure. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say... Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. For we ourselves forgive everyone who has trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, 
Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up to give him anything because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the glaring questions that often comes up when we read this gospel from Luke is, Father, how come that our father sounds different from the one that I memorized? <laughs> and the answer is that this is Luke's, our father, and we memorized the one from Matthew's gospel. So um, they are synoptic gospels. That means that they they go along with each other. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they, they have parallels to each other. But their wording can be a little bit different, and the translators have, have graciously maintained that for us. And as we see in Luke's presentation of the Our Father, there are emphasis. It's smaller, but there are emphasis in areas. For example, forgive us our sins comes out so clearly in, um, in this gospel. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Um, those two go together. The ability to um, receive forgiveness from God it goes along with forgiving others around us. Look, when someone offends us, um, God can't walk in and say, I forgive you for what you did to somebody else because the offense is against us. We have free will. Mm. And we have um, an obligation, according to this gospel, to forgive others if we want to receive God's forgiveness. C.S. Lewis makes a beautiful point of this in his book, Mere Christianity. He says that the um, that God cannot require us to forgive others as a mandate, but he can ask his forgiveness to be conditional. As we f receive God's forgiveness, it is conditional upon our desire, capacity even, to be able to forgive others. And that's a, uh, a hard bar to reach, to be able to forgive others around us. So we have human nature. And yeah, this human nature finds its way into the church in all kinds of ways. We bring our brokenness in. in. I'll give a special shout out to the Catholic daughters who came in to visit me yesterday. And Juanita is the court um, regent for our Catholic daughters here at St. Jude Parish. And um, I was praying for Juanita yesterday and just smiling as I prayed because it turns out Juanita is a retired school teacher. Now, don't you think that's divine providence <laughs> that we would have a school teacher leading the Catholic daughters meeting? Because you need classroom management skills <laughs> if you are going to lead a, a um, Catholic daughters meeting. I've seen these at other parishes. They go wild and everybody <laughs> has their ideas and what goes. And um, a leader needs to have some, some uh, um, ability to be able to pull it together. So that's just human nature that finds its way into the church. And God knew this from the beginning, too, that our human nature would be such that mm -hmm. we would hold our grudges. We would uh, resent other people. And the, um, the gift is to um, be motivated to forgive others by the gift of receiving God's mercy. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's um, as you were talking, it reminded me of there was, there was something in my own life that I was getting really frustrated with some people. Uh, you know, a couple months ago, and I was I was getting really angry, and my wife kind of came to me, and she's like, "You have to stop. You can either continue with your frustration, with your anger, and you can hold that grudge, and you're not going to find any peace, or you can let it go. You can let God take over and, and realize that you can't control them, you can't control what they what they do, but you can entrust them to 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 God and, and how they act, and pray for them instead of just being frustrated at them and angry at them." If you're just holding it and, and expressing it here is doing nothing, and you have to let let it go, Tyler. And and it it, it kind of cut me to the to the right there. Is like, ah, yeah, you're you're right. Like, 
it's easier said than done right. to let something go because our human nature is to hold on to it. But it's interesting that our Lord built it into his prayer. So the disciples came and asked our Lord Jesus, how do we pray? And in the Our Father, he built in this, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we pray it over and over again. When we pray the breviary, for example, um, if I remember right, it's 27 times. Uh, uh, no, that's the glory be. A at the end of the breviary, at the end of the intercessions, we always say in Our Father at morning prayer and at evening prayer. And um, so the, the Our Father is built right into the prayer of the church. And this forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us is uh, ever present there. There is a spiritual ailment as well that can come to us when we refuse to forgive. Mm. We confuse ourselves so often in believing that if I forgive them, they won. And so I can't forgive them. And that's uh, the old expression is that's like swallowing poison and hoping that your enemy dies. Yeah. When we refuse to forgive others, we do more violence to ourselves yeah. than we could possibly do to our enemies. And um, I've, I've met people who have, have just this wound within them and they can't get past it. It's just obvious to people who are talking to them that they're carrying some, some aggression that has never been, been healed. Mm -hmm. And um, the first step is to ask the Lord for desire to forgive. And that can be a, a, an important prayer. So it's built right into our prayer time here to forgive others as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that being too high of a bar to reach right away, we just begin at the beginning. And that is, Lord, please grant me a desire mm. to forgive this person. And with that prayer, um, the Lord desperately wants his children to be in harmony. And you can bet there will be grace there to be able to move in that direction. I've, I've never thought of, you know, just saying that prayer of asking the Lord to give me the desire to forgive someone. I think that's so important because I, 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 especially for something that's, it, it's integral. It's, it's in that prayer that he taught us. If we're asking him to help us with that, he's, he's, he's not going to leave us just stranded there. He's going to give us that help. I mean, that's why I'm always afraid to pray the litany of humility. I'm afraid to be, to be humbled. And, and, but if I ask him even this, that to ask him to give me that strength, that, that ability to forgive and the desire to forgive, he's, he's not going to leave it there because that's a good thing. And sometimes we have to go back and revisit it over mm. and over again. It, it doesn't always happen the first time that we get uh, all the way to that forgiveness because something can happen later in our lives right. and it triggers it again. Yeah. And we got to go back and, and forgive again. I had this experience recently. So everybody knows I'm new to the parish. I don't know my way around very well. <laughs> I need a trash can. So God bless Father Bob. I don't know how he did this. He lived in his office with a tiny little trash can. It's like the ones you find in your bathroom. <laughs> like it's shorter than the toilet, that, that type of a size of, of a trash can. Well... Um, for whatever reason, I get a lot of mail, not my parishioner's mail, but like, like philanthropy type of things. I guess they get into, you get in their databases. Most of you listening have this problem too. We are generous with somebody and then the data gets out there and they send us stuff all the time. So I needed a bigger trash can. And so I said, I'll go to Home Depot. And I went to Home Depot in order to uh, get my new trash can. I had the parish card for Home Depot and everything. And I thought I knew where Home Depot was and kind of manipulated <laughs> the traffic, found my way in and looked up and the big sign said Lowe's. I was in the wrong place. And you know, I'm sure they will not take a Home Depot credit yeah, card at Lowe's. <laughs> yeah. So then I had to get out my phone and figure out where is Home Depot and get guided into Home Depot from Lowe's. And, and as usual, it's just less than a mile away to get from Lowe's <laughs> to Home Depot. But I had to try again. I got to one spot and you know, that was hard enough to manipulate the traffic and go in places that weren't familiar. And then to realize it's not going to work this way. Got to try one more mm -hmm. time. It's the same with forgiveness. You got to keep trying and you're not going to get it um, perfect on the first time, but we actually do come to know ourselves better mm -hmm. as we work through any process of forgiveness. I've preached before on steps of forgiveness, but there are beautiful books out there that can help people to work in that direction. So forgiveness is the golden gift of this day. Wonderful. Well, uh, before we, we finish up with, with your blessing, Father, I just want to thank people again for joining us. Um, we've, we've had, you know, so far, I've seen a, a good handful of people that have started listening to the podcast. Um, and this whole week, I've been trying to get it in different locations. You can now actually, f you'll be able to find the the audio version of this as well on YouTube for those who would prefer to go listen to us there. Um, you can get us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and a whole host of other places as well. So uh, share it with your friends in the parish, especially. Maybe you could explain to people, like, how do you share? Because this is something that I wouldn't <laughs> know. And uh, some of our parishioners might not know, too. But they want to share this. How do you do it? Well, uh, wherever you're listening right now, I'm sure there, there's probably some button that looks like a 
what is it? It kind of looks like a a, uh, a less than sign with a couple dots on there. And you, if you click that thing, it'll probably give you a way, give you a link to share it with someone. You can email it to them. You can text it to them. Um, if you get our parish flock notes, you can you can share it from there. Um, you can also go to our parish website now. I've set up a whole section on our parish website with all the stuff from the podcast. So you go to stjudelakewood.org. Um, and then you do the slash podcast and it'll take you to that part of the website and you'll see, you'll see each episode that is up there. Um, and you can share just that link. Um, you can copy that link to, and email that to any of your friends as well. And they'll be able to listen to it actually straight from our website now as well. Um, so I think some people might find it helpful if they know someone who is working through a need to forgiveness, just, uh, send them our, our podcast absolutely. and see if it doesn't help. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us. And Father, before we finish, would you give us your blessing? Absolutely. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.